Thank you all for joining me. This Friday, families, friends, and loved ones will gather in Lower Manhattan in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, and in Washington, D.C. to commemorate the lives lost 14 years ago. These acts of terror robbed us of 2,977 people. They were our parents, our siblings, our sons and daughters, our friends and our neighbors. Still, in the darkness of these hours, we found light. While civilians ran to safety, our first responders ran towards danger. They scrambled through the rubble of the Twin Towers, the Pentagon, and Shanksville to save who they could, and then they got to work to clean up so that America could rebuild. They were people from all walks of life, united in their effort to help. Today, 14 years after their selfless acts of heroism uplifted a nation, our first responders continue to pay the price for their bravery. People don't realize that the death toll didn't stop on that tragic day. In fact, it continues to grow. Brave men and women, women suffer from terrible cancers and illnesses as a result of toxins they inhaled at ground zero. More than 33,000 first responders and community survivors, including area residents, workers, and children harmed by the disaster, have an illness or an injury that was caused by the attacks or their aftermath. And over two-thirds of these men and women have more than one illness. So far, over 3,700 first responders and survivors have been found to have a 9-11 related cancer. And the Centers for Disease Control have identified 4,385 cancers among these patients. At least 1,700 heroes have already been laid to rest by their families from various illnesses, including James Adroga. In 2010, Congress finally passed the James Dezoga 9-11 Health and Compensation Act, but only funded the program for five years. Now these programs are set to expire at the end of this month, putting the care of first responders and survivors in jeopardy. Approximately 700 people have died from 9-11 related illnesses since we passed the 9-11 bill in 2010. It's hard to believe, but it's true that more police officers have died from 9-11 related illnesses than on 9-11 itself. Congress has an undeniable, inescapable moral obligation to provide these heroes with sufficient health care and proper compensation. We're still working to negotiate a permanent extension so that our heroes can stop spending their time and resources coming to Washington and lobbying Congress for the care they need because believe it or not, some in Washington are more interested in blindly cutting these programs, offering to cover only five years, rather than extend them for as long as they're needed. The illnesses our first responders and survivors suffer from will not expire. Why should their health benefits? Anything short of a permanent extension is unacceptable. Next week, first responders and survivors will come to Washington to lobby Congress for a full and permanent extension of these programs. We'll be joined by John Stewart, who profiled first responders on The Daily Show and was instrumental in the passage of the Zadroga Act. But it shouldn't take John Stewart and it shouldn't take our first responders coming to Washington for Congress to do its job. They shouldn't have to walk the halls of the Senate and the House asking for the benefits that they've already earned. Still, I will join them and will continue to raise my voice with theirs until these programs are permanently renewed. We have promised to never forget 9-11. It's time to meet that pledge by caring for those who continue to suffer from the terror attacks. 